One more example of converting a fraction to a decimal. Let's convert negative two-thirds to a decimal. To convert negative two-thirds to a decimal, <clears throat> we know that the number is a negative number, but in our division, it's easier to keep the negative out of the picture, and we'll simply say that negative two-thirds will equal a negative number when we get through but for the moment we will not put the negative into the problem because it's confusing. 3 will not divide 2, <clears throat> so we'll put down the decimal point, I fix the 0, let's place the decimal in our answer, 3 divides 2 giving 0, 0 times 3 is 0, subtract and we get 2, bring down the next digit, 0. 3 divides 20 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18, subtract, we get 2, I fix another 0, bring it down, 3 divides 20, giving us 6, 6 times 3 is 18, you see what's happening, subtract, we get 2, this is going to continue in the same fashion over and over and over again, you notice we keep getting 2 for the remainder, of fixing the next 0 and bringing it down, we'll have 20 yet again, and so we keep dividing 3 into 20, 3 into 20, 3 into 20 over and over again. Let's do one more just to illustrate this. 6 times 3 is 18. Still the remainder is 2. It's going to continue the same way forever and ever and ever. And so we can write our answer, negative 2 thirds, as negative 0 point 6, 6, 6, enough 6 so we can tell what's coming next and then put the three dots, which are red, and so on, in the same fashion. Or, we can write negative two-thirds as the negative zero point, and then a notation that means this pattern continues forever is to write the six with a bar over it. This means exactly the same thing as the point six, 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 and so on. So negative 0 0.6 with a bar over it means the repeating decimal 0 0.66666 and so on. Now I have some exercises for you to do. Copy the problems down. Stop the tape. Work the problems. And then turn the tape back on to check your answers. We've got two groups of problems. First is to place on a number line negative 6, 12 fifths, and negative 1 and 1 half. The next group of problems is to convert to decimal form. To convert to decimal form, two fractions, negative 23 eighths, and 8 fifteenths. Copy these down, stop the tape, work the problem, and then restart the tape. Here are our answers. What do place on a number line? Negative 6, 12 fifths, which is 2 and 2 fifths, and negative one and one half. The decimal forms of the fractions I gave you are negative two and eight hundred seventy-five thousandths, zero point five three 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 forever, the three repeating indicated by the bar. Now that we're familiar with rational numbers, let's work on the two things that are in our objectives, the absolute value first. The absolute value of a number. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line.
<clears throat> if I ask you how far it is to Greensboro, you might tell me 20 miles. If I ask you how far it is to Martinsville, you might tell me maybe 25 miles. In neither case did you use a negative number, even though one is going south, the other is going north. They're in opposite directions. When we measure distances, we use positive numbers. If I ask you how far it is from your house to your house, then the answer must be zero. Zero, recall, is neither positive nor negative. Zero is neutral. An absolute value, therefore, either is positive or, in the special case of zero, is zero itself. Let's use a number line and find the absolute value of four examples. The symbol for absolute value is vertical bars on either side of the number. So, this asks us to find the absolute value of three. The absolute value of three is its distance from zero on the number line. Here's zero. Here's three. From zero to three is one, two, three spaces. Absolute value of three is three. This asks for the absolute value of negative four. The absolute value of negative four is its distance from zero on the number line. Here's zero. Here's negative four. The distance from zero to negative four is one, two, three, four spaces. Distance is four. So the absolute value of negative four is four. The absolute value of negative one and four fifths. Here's negative one. Negative one and four fifths would be closer to two. What right about here? And the distance from zero at negative one and four fifths is one and four fifths units. The absolute value of negative one and four fifths is one and four fifths. And then our special case, the absolute value of zero, the distance from zero to zero on the number line is zero. So notice that in each case, the absolute value came out to be a positive number or zero itself in the special case. Now let's define the opposite of a number. The opposite of a number n is found the same distance from zero, but on the opposite side of zero. The opposite of a number n is found the same distance from zero, but on the opposite side of zero. For instance, the opposite of 2 is negative 2. The opposite of 2 is negative 2. It's the same distance from 0, but on the opposite side of 0. 2 and negative 2 are on the opposite sides of 0. Now, if we write down the opposite of 2 every time we are asked to find the opposite of a number, that means that we've got a lot of writing to do. So we've got to improve our notation. One more illustration. The opposite of negative four-thirds is four-thirds. Negative four-thirds would be negative one and one-third. That's on the left side of zero. On the other side is positive four-thirds, positive one and one-third. So the opposite of negative four-thirds is positive four-thirds.